Hi everyone. The Asian Pacific Islander Affinity Group just wanted to share a few thoughts. Say something. No? Yes. Bye. Happy API Heritage Month. Any comments? It could be something that you're proud of as an Asian. Proud of as a nation? K-pop! All right, so. The thank you should be saying Eddie. Yeah. On the spot? I need to think. Alex, Alex, Alex. Have anything you want. Don't swear in Chinese. I'm filming. Okay. Every time. Okay, so hey guys. What does it mean to be Asian? Sometimes the food in the dining hall reminds me of China. <laughs> the tofu is so good. Yeah, the tofu. Oh my god. The tofu is so good. I can't. Uh, when I think of being Asian, I think of my sisters and how close we all are. I think of my little boy, Andrew. And I think about coming together. Being Asian in this climate, you kind of, you look to some representation that might not always be there. What does it mean to be Asian American? I, I just never really gave it a second thought. My background, my ethnicity, I never really thought about it. But with the political climate today, there's been a huge surge. And, uh, you know, it's, it was one of the fastest growing groups in the American electorate. Along with that comes kind of a, a stronger sense of solidarity, uh, a newfound appreciation for my background, my ethnicity. Before coming to Westy, there was this one time where I was in New York and someone told me to go back to where you came from. Like, I was in seventh grade, I had a roommate. There was one day he dumped trash on my bed and his parents kind of like reported to the school saying like Asians shouldn't be in this kind of place. He literally dumped trash on my bed, but like nobody actually trusted me. It was March, March 2020. So I took the school couch to New York City and I was waiting for my cousin to pick me up. And there was this woman, she pointed at me and then she told her four year old daughter, she must have COVID. I felt so dumbfounded. What's more disheartening was when I was staying in New York for April, a woman who's like someone who poured sulfur on her face. It was a young Asian woman and her face just got ruined just because that literally happened blocks away from where I lived, which was very horrifying. The surge in Asian hate crimes, often unreported in the past, are now being documented by surveillance cameras and eyewitnesses for all to see on social media. They range from petty insults and harassment to terrifying physical confrontations and assaults, often resulting in injuries. And in the case of several elderly victims, death. I think she was Japanese and she was walking around in New York City, just filming a, a vlog for herself. People on the street would like stop her and unmask themselves and do the uh, slanted eye motion. I was shocked at how people would just blatantly be racist when they know they're being filmed and they would put their mask, mask down. Like they were not afraid to like show their faces because I'm assuming because they felt no shame at being racist. I don't know. This is a poem uh, I had written quite some time ago about a recurring dream where my mother, who's from Hong Kong, and I um, were climbing the Statue of Liberty because it was a dream. <laughs> um, I don't have this dream anymore, but it was uh, impactful and like all dreams, if you read into it, you know, I found some sort of deep-seated meaning. It's called Recurring Dream. In red robes, you and I take turns leading along the sea green lower shoulder of the Statue of Liberty, weather beaten and winded. The spirit of this country riotous because you have climbed so high with your broken English and half-bred son has been chasing us. Go back to Hong Kong, it says, but you can stay because you look like us now. Suddenly I feel the a white pull of privilege, class, and wealth that tell you we should continue for the crown. And so we cross the collar, supporting ourselves with liberty's hollow of neck, hoping freedom does not cough. We look down, measure our slip and plunge over the cold, dark water of New York Harbor, streaked with bodies of yellow light. Look up, the torch burning. And with that, the pursuit and dream end. I wake with sore limbs, fall out of bed. Check outside, see the early morning sky bruised with purple. We are never caught, nor do we make anything of our nightly journey. We reach an ear, then just float, like ghosts, gravitating toward nowhere. I feel like there's a lot of anger that I felt and a lot of frustration. There's this quote I found from Stephen Yoon and it says, 
Sometimes I wonder if the Asian American experience is what it's like when you're thinking about everyone else but nobody else is thinking about you. It's just heartbreaking to see a lot of the stuff that could happen to my peers and their families and like their friends um, and it feels like nobody's speaking up about it. When I'm out of Westie, when I'm not like in this environment anymore, I just honestly don't feel safe all the time. Here's how we should act about anti-Asian hate. The wave of like performative activism from companies like I saw a girl um, who I used to follow on Instagram and she literally like took a picture with her friend posing in front of a mirror that had the words like stop Asian hate and it's just like the crimes against um, my community are not for you to just be performative with um, and so I feel like there's a lot of anger coming from that place because I feel like people are only capitalizing it when it benefits them um, but that being said I do feel like this year it has been so important to bring all of us together especially with our API meetings and I've just really enjoyed being in that space and like meeting new people especially as a freshman and it means a lot to me. The first step to lessen the hate crimes towards Asians is just being aware of how racism hurts people. And you know, there are Asian people in our community, in your communities back home, and being aware and being respectful would be the first step. Understanding others as well. I think it's really, really important, especially in this political climate to push your knowledge and try and educate yourself. I still believe there are mostly nice people out there who are willing to believe in equality and who are respectful, but still we need to recognize the fact that there are still people out there who are not. Those people who are discriminated against, those people who are hurt in those events, they could be me. What I'm trying to say is we really need to address those issues more and we really need to start with Westminster community that we're in. With that comes more you know, research, kind of digging into who I am, my background, and also recognizing it in your daily life. and. I definitely think it's it's a good thing personal for personally for me it's, it's this moment of growth um and it's also i think it's a great thing for the community